Hello, my name is Scott. I am a professional trader and a longtime member of Chart Champions, and I'm excited to be here with our three coaches, Severin, Daniel, and Rivalry. And we are here together to discuss some of our successes from 2023, some of the challenges that we faced, and what we're looking forward to in 2024. So strap in and let's uh, get started. Severin, can you tell us a little bit about some of your successes in 2023? Maybe some obstacles that you faced and some ways that you overcome those? So it was a challenge for me to um, get along with trading, my own stuff, then teaching to the community and bring that all together. And I think what I was struggling with uh, in the beginning was find a balance because I was really, I mean, as a trader, you are already very busy yourself trading your own stuff. And for me, it was very busy in the beginning to combine that um, all and try to find a balance. So I think that was something I was struggling with in the beginning. But um, I feel that now I found a very good way to cope with all of that and find a nice routine and also find some balance in my personal life, but also professional life. Daniel, can you tell us a little bit about your 2023, maybe some notable successes and some challenges that you face? Yeah, so for me, 2023 was honestly like the hardest year of my life. I've had a, a lot of personal challenges as, and you know, it's been a year which has been really hard, uh, but I've learned so much. It's been my hardest year, but also the year where I've managed to change myself personally the most in ways that I feel have improved, you know, myself and the the outlooks that I have. So, uh, you know, just relating it to like trading, we all have ups and downs, ups and downs, and there's never, you can't experience. I remember a guy always told me, uh, if you're happy all the time, uh, then you're not going, or if you're, I can't remember what it was, if you're happy all the time and you don't know sadness, if you don't know sadness and you don't know happiness. So you have to have these sad times to appreciate the good times, essentially. So yeah, this year has had a lot of hard times, um, but I've learned so much and I can take, at the time it's hard, but now like looking back, I'm thinking, wow, that was almost like a blessing in disguise as I'm coming out of this now, like I feel like a better person and learned so much and learned from my past mistakes. So just as we learn in trading, just in real life, like, yeah, I've, it's been a hard year. I've learned a lot and I really am looking forward to 2024. <laughs> I feel like now that can be a time where it's been a hard year. I haven't had too much wins this year, but there have been some. But 2024, I feel it's like a year I can just go win, 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 win and, and, and on the bull market of life. <laughs> well, you know what? Sometimes life's hardest times bring the best lessons. Yes, yes. that nice. has been the case for sure. <laughs> a rivalry. Our man, our scalper extraordinaire. Can you tell us a little bit about 2023? What were some of your major successes and did you face any challenges as well? Man, uh, I'm gonna have to echo Daniel. Uh, 2023 was very rough. And uh, 2022 for me was great. Uh, unfortunately, even for myself, it was a very big personal battle for me going into 2023. In my personal life, I pretty much lost most of my community um, that I was surrounded myself with who I considered my brothers. Um, and even with my personal finances as well, because as an American, you know, there's not a whole lot of clarity when it comes to crypto. I had money in FTX, had money in Voyager. So, uh, rebuilding myself, so to speak. Um, I don't want to, I'm not going to try to make it sound so terrible to where like I went from rags to riches from trading but i was still fine but it was definitely a psychological blow um that was quite a, a large sum of money i lost in voyager and ftx and just trying to get over that whole i guess boundary of um trying to gain gain everything back that uh, you didn't lose from trading. You like it was something out of your control, you know. Because if I take a loss in trading, it's like not a big deal. Like you know, you move on, right? But if you lose it out of your control, uh, you t you tend to start obsessing over things and saying what I could have done wrong, what could have done better, what this, this, and that. All these scenarios that make you that that tend to be a little unhealthy. But um, you know, and at the same time, that was. Uh, the time chart champions uh, asked me to join the team and you know um, anyone that knows me in the community I'm all like yeah let's go let's win and you know it wasn't really so much of a, a facade but I believe it helped me heal through that season and uh, because you know if you continue to 
um, place yourself in darkness and, uh, you know, the kind of sulk in that, it, like you tend to take residence in the sorrow, you won't be able to walk through it. So, Well, often in life, when one door closes, another door opens. That's right. Yes, and we have a lot to look forward to over the next year. But before we do uh, go over to 2024, can I ask each of you a question about the last year? Severin, what was your biggest lesson learned over the last year from becoming a coach? Um, my biggest lesson, lesson definitely was that you can't achieve success alone. I think that is, it is always a matter of having a nice support system. And that is, um, yeah, I would say it is a support system, but it's also finding a balance. I think if it gets to a point where you are too focused on only your, um, let's call it financial goals, that's not going to work out in the long run. So you'd really have to find a balance to be able to maintain your, I would say, best performance, especially in trading where you need to be on the ball, where you need to be focused all the time. Because you can only make it in trading if you are there every day, I would say. Oh, and I love that ideal of balance, not only in trading, but in life as well. Yeah, great answer. Daniel, was there anything special that happened this year or any favorite memories from 2023? One that stands out was uh, the Bybit event that was in Singapore. That was a really well uh, put together event. Uh, got to meet a lot of other traders there uh, from all over the world. So that, that was a really uh, nice event where I could just switch off from a lot of the things that were going on in my life and just meet new people and hear their experiences. And, and that, that, that was really fun. And then uh, the, the, the Chart Champions event, you know, that has that for me has been nice because, you know, working everywhere, you know, with even some of the new people that we've got right from from the back end to see them for the first time. This has been for me like a really nice uh, way to reconnect because I have been become disconnected as well from from uh, from people in Chart Champions. So for me to get everyone together and, and come back, I feel is going to be it's so positive and it's given me like a, a real big uh, focus and happiness for 2024. And I, I, I needed this. So this, this really is like a really good changing point for me. <laughs> well, I can say from the standpoint of my standpoint that I feel the same and that I'm very glad that we were all to get together for this round table yeah. and share some of our ideas and share some of our successes and some of our uh, not so successes. Yeah. Uh, now rivalry, my question for you. What are you most proud of, of yourself for doing in 2023? Well, that's a lot, man. <laughs> Where do I start? Honestly, uh, I, 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 it may sound cliche, but it, it's the little messages I receive in the community. You know, when, uh, uh, and they know who they are because they message me every day. <laughs> you know, when they, when they send me the messages of their payout, uh, some of them, because um, they become a funded trader. And then not just a funded trader because, you know, the funding certificate is not everything. It's the payout that they send and the fact that they are now getting paid or they transition to a full-time trader or even something as simple as, um, hey, I'm starting to understand it or the common joke is, oh, I call this the rivalry special. It's something I always link them, right? So, you know, just these little nuances that uh, kind of just uh, give me joy, you know, because I've shared with people very close to me that although I love to trade, um, I have a passion for trading, I believe uh, something uh, that supersedes that is my passion to educate. I love teaching people and I love seeing them win. And I truly believe that, um, you know, all of us, you know, have been anointed in this, uh, like this profession to teach. And not only just to teach because teaching is one part of it, but also, also mentoring because you have to um, not only just disciple someone, but you have to also walk them through it. And I believe Honestly, like as long as you can't just give someone education and be like, you know what, here you go. You know, you got to not only provide them the right uh, education, you got to help them walk through it and then help relate to relate to them. Because if you're not relatable, you know, it's not going to work. Yeah, I agree. And having known you for a couple of years now, I can say that there's definitely been a shift and I can see your passion when it comes to education. And as one of those people who probably DMs you all the time with my, <laughs> with my funding certificates, uh, you know, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Of course, yes. you're very welcome. Rivalry, I'd like to ask you about what you envision for 2024, some goals, both personal and professional, and how you think you could be able to achieve those goals. I mean, I hate to sound arrogant, but I'm going to have to just call it out is I don't really have any trading goals. Personally, mine would be more outside of trading. 
Um, I used to compete uh, competitively in uh, men's physique. I would like to get back in shape <laughs> because it goes back to balance, honestly. So uh, I, my health has taken a toll. I mean, I'm not like unhealthy, but my health has taken a toll in that. I believe it's sacrificed a little bit on uh, my original passion, which was to work out. Um, and then like a financial goal, I would love to open a winery. Uh, you know, that is within reach of 2024, so. Yes, well, you have to have us out to the winery. Yes. Uh, and we'll be your sample customer. Red wine, so. you know, there yeah. you go. <laughs> uh, no, I love that. And a wise man once told me that your health is your wealth. Yes. So you have to prioritize that over all things because if you're not healthy, then you can't take care of yourself and your family. So Absolutely. that's what matters. Yeah. Severin, is there anything that comes to mind for 2024 uh, in terms of goals, both personal and professional, don't have to be just trading? Yeah. What's on your mind? What are you looking ahead to? So I actually have a very, very structured way in approaching my goals. So every month I have a review with myself where I write down my goals. I write down the actions I need to take to achieve my goals. And I also work on the beliefs I need to have in order to achieve these goals. Because, for example, if you have financial goals, but you believe that you are or there is a belief that you are not worthy of your goals, you probably won't achieve your goals. So for me, it's a combination of all three, which I'm working on constantly. I'm obviously gonna do the same for next year, right? And in my personal life also, I try to keep the balance. I try to be as strict with my routine as possible because I really found that having the right routine has a great impact on my life. That's what I'm trying to do. And um, yeah, also spending a bit more time with uh, loved ones. So that is some something you sometimes sacrifice when you are I'm trying to achieve your goals, but I try to be as balanced as possible. So Yes, those are really wonderful goals. And I hope you were all listening and you all also do the same. The way that you structure uh, going about your goals, so squaring off your beliefs and making sure that you're okay and taking care of things in the future. I really think that's amazing. Yeah. Daniel, are there anything in particular that you're looking forward to in 2024? Do you have any goals, whether professional or personal, that you'd like to share? Yeah, well, I think my honestly my biggest goal for twenty twenty four is uh, finding my routine again. This year has been hard for me, and also not having a, a place to stay, and that affected my routine massively. And I and I crave uh, having a routine. So I I want to have a routine where I can just wake up every day, uh, use the gym, work. Uh, you know now you know, being maybe more of a leader in chart champions and seeing everyone, you know, picking up with people. So I really just, this year or next year, <laughs> I want to like focus on chart champions and focus on just getting into a healthy routine, focusing on my diet, focusing on working out and just having a really good balance. Uh, it's something I've really, really struggled with this year. And I'm, I'm just so looking forward to getting a place where I can be and just just every day I want to be the same. <laughs> and in, in terms of like personal things that I want to do, uh, I really want to learn the piano. That's one thing that I want to do this year. Uh, that would be like, I'll be so happy if I can find a time to, to learn the piano. Uh, so that's, and, and I want to uh, learn another language as well. So if I can do even one of those things, that'll be a good year for me. If I can get my routine, turn up every day and show, you know, the consistency and, and you know, go, take trading once again, like forefront of my attention, uh, I'll be like super happy. So <laughs> not hard goal, but for me, I just want to be consistent again. And that, that, that for me will be so good. No, I think those are really good goals. And I think the idea of balance is uh, very much coming into play in this next year. Yeah. Um, I do have a question for you. Yeah. What uh, song would you like to learn on the piano? That I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest. Like I am not. A, I, my, my 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 music is like reggaeton, which is nothing, nothing for a <laughs> piano. So I, I have no idea. I just like, I like the idea. In my house, I'd like to have a grand piano, but I don't want it just to be there. I want to know how to play it. So I'd only, I'd challenge myself. I want it there in, in the house, but I'd only buy it if I know how to play it. So the type of music, maybe some sort of classical slow music, just like that. But. Uh, yeah, first I, I need to challenge myself to learn it and then, then I'll go for, for getting a piano if I'm any good. Well, thank you very much for all of those wonderful goals. Uh, it inspires me to hear your vision and it pushes me to want to create my own vision for the next year. I think that's really wonderful. Unfortunately, those were the easy questions. And right, and right now I'd like to get into some of the more difficult questions. 
And I know typically that we've been a bit less structured with this, but bringing some structure I feel um, will give us a bit more organization and I'm happy to hear from each of you individually as well. But feel free to continue the conversation between yourselves if, it's okay, if it comes up, yeah? So Rivalry, I wanna start with you. How do you think the next year could impact you? In, in the trading space in general, uh, there's always a question of whether a person is legitimate, you know, and there's all, and it's one of those spaces where you don't, there's a lot of influencers and you can't tell the difference between who's a trader or who's an influencer. Um, and even if you show proof of work, they'll just say, hey, you're just Photoshopping. So although it wasn't listed as one of my goals, you know, for me, um, it's really important for me because I, I love this company and what we represent is a vision that like I personally have taken the mantle for myself to join. Um, I, I, I don't even know if it's that important, but apparently on Twitter, it's big. It's like, it's called the Robin's Cup. So I want to join that and just prove that we're the best, you know, and I know that's going to require a lot of discipline on my end and that's going to affect my family. Um, and the same thing about sacrifice. I, I truly believe that's going to be a sacrifice. But at the same time, yeah. um, if you have the support system that believe in that same vision and you are aligned, that it works out in that favor. Because if you're not aligned in that vision and that you don't share that same passion or they don't align with you to say, I believe in you and you're going to do that, you're going to do well. Um, I think that's something that I would personally struggle with. And I love that. And uh, myself personally, my family is my, my main priority. And so I think it's very important to also include your family into your oh, goal setting and into your ideas so that they can share the vision with you mm -hmm. and so that they can pull you back on the path whenever they've seen that you may be led astray. Yeah, absolutely. Because like, you know, like one of the most important things, you know, like anytime you see a video or anyone that talks about it, hey, you know, it's always like trading psychology, trading psychology, like what the hell does it mean, right? Like you, but all that, all that really means is like, um, for me at least, it, you could speak on everything that everyone else has said, but no one really talks about family, right? And how important of a role they play. Because how many of us, and I know anyone can relate to this, where you get into the trading space, whether it be your wife or your brother, your sister, your friends, your parents will say to you, go get a real job, that's not a job. But you know, anyone who's been profitable knows that how, how much potential this could be. You know, even, you know, like it, the screenshots, regardless if you think they're fake or not, right? The, 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 um, the, con the potential for growth is there, I apologize. So yeah, the potential of growth is there, you know, and you, uh, the ability to scale is endless, really. It's all based on your skill set, and you're limited based on just the skill set alone. So, um, but those personal struggles, everyone knows, losing does not feel good. And it's one of the very, very few professions where you take a loss, it impacts you, right? And how you receive that impact, um, everyone tries to internalize by themselves, but they don't understand that that actually tends to roll over and just like trickle down to people around you. So when that starts getting toxic or you don't have that support system, you're already walking in uh, to your quote unquote workstation unequipped, not ready, ill prepared, unhappy, you know, doubting yourself versus, you know, like there's little things like, for instance, uh, let's say a child, right? Um, they did lots of these studies with children where um, they would forcefully talk down to them and a child would not grow healthy, right? And even myself, I don't like being people talking shit to me. Like, I don't like that. Like, no, who likes that? Yeah, but if I say, Scott, you're amazing. You're an amazing trader. I believe in you. You're awesome. That already feels good. Like, I, I already feel good listening to it. You I know? feel good as well. And, you see? Like, so if you have that support system surrounding you, it truly is amazing. I agree, and I also think that with a great support system comes a great internal support, support yes. system. You can have a bad trade, you can have a bad day, you can have a bad month, and you can beat yourself up about it, or you can take yourself into account and you can actually figure out, hey, what are the mistakes that I made? Why did I make those mistakes? And think a little bit deeper on that, and then figure out a way to, hey, how am I not gonna make this mistake again next time in the same situation? I think that was a wonderful answer. Daniel, I have a question for you. Yep. Yeah. 
How, you mentioned some of your goals already. Yep. And I think those are awesome. How do you think you'll adapt and change over the next year in 2024 to reach those goals? What, what I lacked this year was stability. And so for me, a simple thing of having a house to be in is like gonna just like be a major change. So for, yeah, for me, it's uh, gonna be pretty simple. Yeah, just get my stability from my end, get get the house, get the, just be in one place. And for me, I feel that that's gonna sort out like it's like a massive life thing. Like I'm gonna be able to do what I want because I'm just gonna have the space to do it. And then it's gonna be like a really nice personal challenge. Uh, you know, I wanna take more of a, a step into chart champions from like the, the top end, uh, however you want to call it, like leadership. And so, uh, you know, I have never, I have other businesses, but they're, you know, basically my majority of my business are all um, property business, real estate. So it's not like I have to be managing people. I just get a company and they, they run everything for me, right? So now Chart Champions is really fun because now we have like so many employees. Uh, it's going to be a challenge for me to, um, be able to like connect with all the employees, make sure everybody's doing well, everyone's happy. And, you know, I'd always stepped back from that in the past, just thinking I'm not really meant for, or I'm not good at, at managing people. So I prefer to have, you know, someone in between. But now, you know, the challenge is open and I feel, I, I was reserved on, on wanting to do it, but, you know, the whole team was like, you can do this. You just need to, you know, you just need to, to try. And so it's gonna be really fun for me to try. And I do believe I can do it well. Uh, so it's gonna be a simple case of just, you know, turning up every day, building that connection. And uh, it's, it's gonna be a really, really fun challenge for me to prove to myself that I actually can, um, you know, uh, uh, lead and, and assist people in that way. <laughs> I think you absolutely can. And having met the wonderful team here, I think uh, it's obvious from the way that when you speak that they listen, that they have respect for you that they believe in you. And I just want to say that I know you can do it. And it's going to be... That's like the main... When I mean, you're meeting all the team and they're, they're, they're telling me like, yeah, they're, 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 they're thoughts. And it's it's really, it's like, wow. This, it, it's, for me, it's like really inspirational. Like, uh, yeah, it's just like, I just need to do this now. And it's like the time. And I think it's going to be like such a good year. <laughs> yeah, no, and everything in the past happens for a reason. Sometimes, like you mentioned, you can't go through happiness without having experienced some sort of, you know, anxiety, sadness, depression yeah. and stuff. So uh, I think that's really inspirational and I really love that goal. <laughs> Severin, yes. here we go, buddy. You, you have such a, a good goal structure. You really seem like you have it all figured out. But here's my question to you. What obstacles do you foresee that could limit and potentially stop you from getting to your goals? Uh, let me think about this. So um, for me personally, besides trading, it's all about personal development and I'm always trying to find something I can improve on. But something, um, sometimes what's more difficult is identify weaknesses and then try to work on these, like specifically work on these weaknesses. So for me, I think for 2024, I really want to bring myself to the next level, not only as a trader, but, only, but also as a person. And also as a boyfriend for my girlfriend, we have a relationship. We try to bring it to the next level. So also on the personal side of things. And um, actually what I forgot to mention is a goal for me for 2024 is also, I think I have a very unique mindset, a very strong mindset. And I try to carry that over to the community as well. Cause I was sometimes a bit reserved where it's like, yeah, I'm quite new to this position. Maybe I don't feel comfortable sharing some things I'm actually thinking and I could, or other people could really benefit from this mindset. So I really try to, um, yeah, g share some, more personal stuff and some share my mindset share my um, also my development or my growth as a trader because that was all based off my personality and my mindset what do you think would be a good strategy for a newer trader someone who's just barely tapping into trading uh, to help set the goals for them to be successful yeah, so I think um, trading for me personally was always like a real profession and I think it is very important for people to also realize that trading can be a profession and it's not just a hobby. Okay, so that means when you tap into trading, you should take it serious. And that means you have to put in the work, you have to put in the dedication, you should obviously also enjoy what you're doing. So there should be a passion to it. 
But um, what's really important is to keep working on yourself because it's all about the psychology, but also keep going through the process because I see so many people giving up and I've also seen the people who turned the ship around. So I can tell you all that it is possible to become a profitable trader. CC has created so many profitable traders. Rivalry and myself, for example, are a um, result of CC as well. So I truly feel that you are at the right place with us teaching our strategies. And yeah, I wanna say that anyone can achieve success in trading. That is truly what I believe. And that is also why I am a coach and why I'm so happy being a coach because I believe in the success of a trader. I share that belief with you and uh, yeah, I do. Daniel, if you had to put yourself in the shoes of a brand new trader, how would you start out? If I was starting again, let's say, if, uh, when I first got into more like, like hardcore trading, I was really only focused in uh, low term time frame, quick scope trades, getting in, getting out, getting in, getting out. And um, now through the years, of course, I my uh, trading has developed and developed and developed. And I feel uh, I'm not sure I would ever go back to scope trading now um, because I, I do see I see the benefits and the cons and swing trading is like it has for me anyway i see so much bigger benefits uh from like lifestyle of having uh time in terms of you don't need to be like all day at the computer or at least when i was scope trading i would spend like all day and like literally like 14 hours a day just scope trading that was for a passion and love what i'd done but also i can see it wasn't healthy uh, it wasn't healthy for me to do that and so as a newer trader I would say, honestly, swing trading for me at least is, is easier. Um, I know the majority of our members are nine to five jobs as well. So also swing trading would fit in for the majority of them. Our average age, you know, they're, they're older, uh, our, our average client. So that also would fit in. I feel the younger you are, you know, uh, scope trading is maybe more easy. Whereas, you know, if you've got a 70 year old, they're gonna struggle more, I would imagine, with scope trading, just because you gotta be so fast paced. Uh, and it's not impossible, of course, but it's, it's naturally gonna be a little bit harder. And so I feel as a newer trader, young or old, um, swing trading is a really, really good route. And I actually plan to do some contender sessions on this to explain more in depth reasons why but really just as a general overview, uh, it's gonna be easier to learn. It's like less stressful and time intensive. Um, and it and I know a lot of people are, especially in the community, love to uh, sculpt trade because they see the coaches doing it. And I was always, always a sculpt trader. And so I think a lot of people just feel, feel like I can make more money if I'm a sculpt trader. And that I cannot argue with because I actually do make more money when I'm sculpt trading. But at the end of the day, I'm still making really good money swing trading. So uh, the, the payoff of, uh, you know, more money versus uh, like that all comes down to the balance, like as being a general theme of this, like the balance is key. And for me, uh, as someone that has a massive addictive personality, it's very hard for me to find that balance when sculpt trading, because I would just go on the computer and spend all day. And by the time I know it, it's like, two, it's like I've missed the whole day. <laughs> Those were all amazing answers. And Rivalry, I do have a question for you on that same topic. Absolutely. Since you have a fair bit of trading experience and you've been there and you've done that, what would you do if you had maybe a year or two under your belt? How would you wanna see yourself progress as the trader and be, in order to become the trader that you are today? You know, I could only relate it to other life experiences. So when I, um, did my competition for men's physique. I already knew how to work out. I already knew how to diet, but I told myself that if I'm going to enter in this, I'm going to make sure that I do it right because I don't want to half-ass anything, right? So I, I reached out to a really good friend of mine who is already a professional. He, this is what he does for a living. So I said, hey, can you help me? And, you know, at the time, I thought it was just going to be help, but he's like, oh, do you, so you want to hire me? So, but that's what I want to expand on. And I know it's kind of like taboo to always talk about it in, in this space to where, um, oh, you could get everything for free. But I personally believe that getting a mentor in the trading space who has done it, but make sure it's the right one, right? Um, and following that to the T, right? Because you 
don't know what you're doing. Let's just be real. Like, uh, take any profession. I don't care if it's in sports. I don't care if it's a law degree. I don't care if it's in medical field, even in trading, right? You don't know what you're doing. You need to get it from the source who knows what they're doing. And I believe imitation is a, a first step into gaining that foundation because most of the time, um, I had this conversation before actually just to backtrack. Um, I didn't agree with a lot of my coach was doing like in terms of workouts, in terms of diet, but the moment I changed something, then I could, I, I can't honestly say that I followed it. Right. So I had to make sure that I was following it, everything in order for me to say I did it because he did it. This, so this, this has got to work right now, as once I went through that process, then yes, obviously, uh, at that point I can make my changes that fit my personality a little bit better that I feel more comfortable with. So hiring a mentor, I believe is one of the best things you can do because you know, we, the space is riddled with like, Oh, I did it. You know, like I, I did this from the ground up. No, they didn't. They had some help somewhere, some way, somehow, whether they want to admit it or not, they followed someone, uh, whether that they followed them, um, unknowingly, or they just don't want to give them credit where credit is due. Like when I met Daniel, like I I'm copying everything he's doing. Right. To the point to where I actually want to speak on this, I actually disagree with the whole swing trading perspective. Like for me, I believe exposure and getting there, like throwing as many trades as you can just to get those mileage. And the example I always give the community is um, think like baseball, right? Anyone who's played baseball. I went to a batting cage like on a date before, and this thing is flying at me at 60, 70 miles an hour. I don't know what that is in kilometers for the Europeans out here, but it's, but it's pretty slow for a pitch, right? But I thought I was going to die. Like this thing was flying by me so fast. But over time, you know, after a few swings, I started to realize, okay, I can getting used to this. And that's where kind of like where you can pull trades, but you don't want to pull trades with real money. This is where demo comes in. And this is where, um, you can actually kind of scale the speed at which you learn if you scalp trade low time frame, right? But once you get to that point to where you've pulled those trades, then yes, I, then I would agree to where you would want to change your way. If you want to be a day trader, you want to stick to scalping. Uh, if you want to be a swing trader for a better quality of life, which I also agree with. Mm. Yes. But, uh, uh, for instance, like for myself, I love to scalp, you know, I just, I'm, I'm obsessed of doing it. Right. I have fun doing it. So it's a challenge for me. It may not be for everybody. So, um, for somebody who like the example you gave is for me, if I was only a year in, I would still follow it similarly because I did, I was searching for a mentor, probably not in the right way. Cause I was looking for signals. Okay. <laughs> Let's be real. But, but if I, if I really wanted to take this opportunity to, uh, make it a profession, um, and take it seriously, then yes, you need to make sure you get yourself a mentor that will teach you the ropes to that and to be transparent with you because the space, like I said, is saturated with, Hey, buy this coin and it's going to 100 X. And like, you just look at YouTube. It's, it's insane. Like this is the next one that's going to make you a millionaire. Like, no, that's not how trading works. Right. Um, that's, that's TikTok millionaires, you know, like that they probably were lucky at that moment, you know, which there's a, there is a, a, a sprinkle of luck in trading. I, I, I can argue, but you know, but if you want to make it a profession, you definitely need to treat it like a business, number one. And with a business, you know, just a business in general, there's what gross versus net. You've always heard it before. Oh, I have a $20 million business yearly growth, uh, gross, but what are they making net? Right. Um, if they're making only 2 million, that means they have a net loss, right? That's no different from a stop loss. So if you're treating it like a business, I think you're going to do well. No, I completely agree. And your point about having a mentor, mm -hmm. I think is an important one. Yes. You know, even Batman had Alfred. Yeah. So, you know, and as I look forward and as someone who's a mentee of yours, I think it's important to respect your mentorship. If someone is taking the time to help teach you, to help pass on the knowledge that they've acquired through the hard work and trials and tribulations of their career, yes. I think you should absolutely pay them respect by not just uh, asking them only when you have a problem. Yes. Reaching out to them on your own account, doing something nice for them. 
providing some sort of value for them in your own way that shows them that you really care and that you're really appreciative. Yeah, absolutely, because it changes lives. And not only that, um, it, sh it shows the appreciation. Like for myself, I, I really meant what I said, that the messages really do affect me in a positive way, knowing that I've impacted someone's life. And that's enough for me, you know? Like it, it's more than enough, honestly. Yeah, well, we appreciate you for that. Now, it wouldn't be a Chart Champions roundtable if we didn't talk some markets and TA. Um, Daniel, do you mind telling us a little bit about what you foresee, we don't want signals, but what you foresee for Bitcoin in 2024 over the next year as prices start to develop? Let me write this down, okay. <laughs> I, and I, I wanted to say, before I do that, I just wanted to say one point, and I totally do it, actually, for, I, I definitely like, agree, to be fair, of when I think about it, like you need that exposure. Mm -hmm. And it, it is true when you think about it, if you are starting off and you are only swing trading and you are only taking one trade, like a week, let's say, you are not gonna learn as fast as if you're taking 10 trades a day. So that is actually a really, really, really good point. And when I, when I yeah, think of that perspective, I have to totally agree. So that, that was a very, very good point. Um, and in terms of like market analysis for Bitcoin, I mean, I think 2024 is going to be like the big year of crypto because we got, everyone always knows, everyone knows now, right? The ETF hype is is real. We just saw Bitcoin fly from really as soon as it reclaimed 27,500, you know, we're now trading to, today at $44,000. And this has been not a slow rise. It's day on day on day on day on day. We're like several green weeks in a row. Um, and this is all... You know, we always say it's built off of uh, the technicals, right? Uh, it's just been extremely quick. Uh, so for me, uh, the ETF, whether it gets approved or denied, I am always a technical trader, but this is going to affect the market, like undeniably. Um, so, but I, I, I'm basically going to be viewing it like um, I've got my technical levels to trade. I know where I want to trade them. And I do feel that the ETF, everybody feels that if it gets accepted, uh, then it's going to pump the market. But I'm actually under the viewpoint of if and if it gets accepted, the market can absolutely dump really hard. So at the end of the day, what I'm trying to say is it doesn't matter if it's approved or accepted. All we need to do is have our levels, have our you know alert set, and then trade the reaction. So... I would always say I have my thoughts and, and biases, which at the moment, as of today, like are, are bullish. But my, I don't really see the point almost of giving a long-term prediction. And I, again, two sides, it's like, I do see the point obviously, but I don't when it comes to my own trading, because it's like, I'm gonna change my bias tomorrow if I need to change my bias tomorrow, right? So it's 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 a, a question that everyone knows and everyone will see like I have long-term Elliott Wave predictions and obviously I have a forecast of what I think is happening. And what's really, really, really important to know is that um, these predictions and forecasts are off of information I have today and the time and that forecast potentially can be totally changed tomorrow if, if necessary from the new data received. So I feel, just to summarize, ETF, massively important, even as technical traders, we would be extremely naive to, to not consider the, the fundamentals in play here. I feel everybody feels that ETF approval is gonna equal massive pump. If it is perfect, it's all gonna be in the charts, but just be aware that can lead to a massive fake out. You know, there's a lot of liquidity that will be built. And if you wanna build big shorts, you need big liquidity. So you always have to be aware of that scenario. Uh, and myself as a trader, of course, I'm always going to say it's easier to make money when the market's going up. It's just pretty, it's, it's always going to be easier when the market's going up. So if it pumps massively, hey, it's easier money for, for everybody. But the market isn't always going to be so giving, especially cryptocurrency. Stock market is a bit easier, but crypto is its own beast. So this um, isn't always just going to be always up easy money kind of thing. It's going to have massive downturns, massive fake outs. It's the Wild West. And so I'm prepared for the Wild West. Uh, I've got my levels of resistance above us. I think you know, at $48,000, $52,000 zone, absolutely crucial. If we reclaim that, absolutely all-time highs uh, without a doubt. And I'm positioned at the moment for longs and all-time highs. But I'm, I'm waiting to take a short, which I've not taken yet. And my bias for the past few months has been long and chill, bullish, 
go higher. So I would love to see tested this 50K zone, give or take a few thousand dollars over size, uh, because I feel that's gonna be such a clear indication of the rest of the year potentially to come. So I'm, I'm at the moment looking for higher. I am positioned for higher, um, but I know what to do if I see a sign of weakness to position myself for uh, lower prices to come. And uh, all of us here as traders, we all know, we don't really care where the market goes. It doesn't make any difference to us if Bitcoin goes to $1,000. Uh, we position ourselves for $1,000 if that's the highest likelihood. Um, and I know the guys sitting next to me think the same, like we don't care where it goes. We just care about taking the best trades and making money. So uh, that would be my overall prediction, like higher at first, but if we reject from my key zone, hey, I'm taking shorts and I'm, I'm trading it at least for a higher low and then see where it goes from there. Rivalry, our Scoutmaster extraordinaire 5,000. What do you see for the ES market over the next year? What I love about the futures market is uh, it actually is driven clearly on a lot of fundamentals. Like uh, with all the data releases that are out, it's all you need to do is watch the DXY and you inverse it. And for myself, my personal strategy is volume profiles, very data derivative, uh, d driven, I apologize. And right now we're hitting at resistance. So as long as we continue to see buyers at the highs, it's gonna take out the all time high in my opinion. The only time where I feel personally where it's gonna remain in balance and it's gonna start rotating to the downsides is we see a nice weekly bearish close. But other than that, I see no reason as to why this thing doesn't stop running. Severin, do you mind telling us a little bit about a few of your thoughts on your outlook for the altcoins in 2024? Yes, sure. So in my altcoin strategy, what I teach is the order of proceedings, what I do. So I first of all look at Bitcoin. I then look at Ethereum and then I select an altcoin. So that's why, for example, the Bitcoin ETF approval might also have an impact on the altcoins as well. But for me personally, it's not really that a price of Bitcoin, Ethereum or an altcoin gets me excited. What would get me excited is if we see some more increases in volume. So what we saw over the last um, couple of months is that there is a lot of volume flowing into the market again, also flowing, flowing into the altcoins. And in my opinion, as long as Bitcoin is in such an uptrend, I am less interested in taking short trades on the altcoins. But for me personally, since I'm a trader and I personally don't invest in altcoins long term. So for me, it's not so much about the price we're hitting next year. For me, it's more about having the levels to the upside, having the levels to the downside. To the downside, I'm very structured, well prepared. What I'm going to do if we hit one of my levels, I'm obviously going to read the correlations, which I also think is one of my... Yeah, most important traits in trading is to read correlations. It's not only in the futures market, but especially when tra trading altcoins, because Bitcoin and Ethereum do really have an impact on these altcoins. So I think for me, it's always a top-down approach on the altcoins, and I continue doing that next year. So whatever happens with the ATF approval, if I see a nice pullback on Bitcoin, I'm going to translate that over to the altcoins. I'm not getting excited. I'm just trading my levels. Well, I want to say thank you to all of our coaches for your interesting, introspective thoughts and sharing with us some personal and some professional stuff. I think it's really important as we move into the new year to think a lot about balance, to consider mentorships and how we can progress in our trading, and also to pick a lane that fits best for our trading style. Yeah. Last but not least, we want to say thank you to all the members. We appreciate your support. We look forward to growing together in 2024. And we hope that from our family to yours, that you have a happy holidays and a happy new year.